Okay, we're live. Um, so, Karen, just from the few minutes since you've been here, I know you're a gracious person. Uh, you literally walked in, and I was like, "Hi, what are you here for?" What are you for? <laughs> you're like, my who'd you say you were? <laughs> my interview. Uh, so I know you're very gracious, and um, I said something like, "How's your day?" And you said, "Oh, I made a mistake here or there," and I thought that was also very gracious. Cover, helping me recover from my uh, faux pas of not knowing my it calendar. It was actually trying to help me recover from the David. <laughs> it really? It worked for you too. That's good. Okay. Well, I, I think gracious and uh, mm. humble so far. Um, so I like that quite a lot. Humble. Um, so tell me, tell me a little bit about um, how you, well, first of all, a second ago we were talking about um, ageism. Mm-hmm. We are both on the more experienced That's side right. side of things. Good word. So, in your experience, mm-hmm. like when you're thinking about like somebody who's going to have longevity in mm-hmm. teaching, mm-hmm. what what do you think as a person would serve them well to hang in there in the game of teaching? Tenacity. 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 This job requires a lot of a person, and you need to know that you can handle it. Yeah. And keep on going. Lift your head up every now and then, but say more about the thing, like maybe something you went through where you saw in yourself that tenacity where you're like, "Ooh, this was hard, but you stuck Actually, it through." Actually, as a new teacher, every single hour, every <laughs> single day, and I honestly don't mean that to be funny, although no, I, I could change it into that. Yeah. I um I was kind of like a deer in headlights long time ago when I first started I and was literally looking over the heads of my students because I couldn't look them in the eye I'm like the opposite person at this point I mean forever now but um, it took a lot to get through yeah and I had been easily successful at everything that I had done up until that point and mm. I think I was 26 when I started teaching mm-hmm. and it was not going so well Oh my gosh. And I had to really rethink things. I went and bought a book on, I don't think it was a book on discipline in the classroom, but some you know, class, some classroom management and like memorized this whole system and was ready to go in January. Mm-hmm. And I realized very soon that oh, I, I created what I'm dealing with here and it can't be fixed in the middle of the year. <laughs> I need, I need no, them to exit I, stage I had left to just and... kind of deal one day at a time and then start over again. And it was always better after that. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, over time you develop a philosophy of teaching and you tweak it and try new things until yeah. all of a sudden it feels like you've been doing it forever. You so and... go to that philosophy. Tell me, like, some of the things you maybe understood one way when you first started and you shifted and you're like okay that's who I am. I'm not sure I really understood anything when (laughs) I first started (laughs) but it fits with who I am as a person to develop relationships and that Mm. was that's really the secret sauce. If my students don't think I know them well, if they don't think that I love them, if um, they were really impressed that I could protect them after our knowledge saves lives training (laughs) they totally bought that 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 i had their back i was going to be their protector so i guess i can add that now (laughs) if they don't think i'm their protector (laughs) if they don't have a voice in the classroom if they Mm. don't feel like they're known um, by their teacher and by others then they aren't capable of learning anything in the classroom so Mm. it's very very dynamic it takes a lot of energy to develop those relationships yeah. Some of them you have to kind of fake a little because it's hard to get to know mm-hmm. kids. Mm-hmm. But the minute that I identify that somebody is having trouble in the classroom for one reason or another, I kind of double down in on them getting to know them better, communicate with them a little more, let mm-hmm. them know that I'm paying attention to them more. And it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's something you could suggest for a teacher who, like you said, I double down and like in your mind, you know what that means to go toward the student and work on the relationship. But let's say I'm a new teacher and I don't quite know what that looks like. What what are like 
the practicalities one or of two that. practical things you can go hey Wes do this uh, look them in the eyes more than you might have before be intentional about um, using their name and having mm. a 30 second conversation with them while they're walking in from the classroom or when you're walking around the room checking on things pull up a stool and sit and yeah. see how they're doing yeah yeah it reminds me of um sales a little bit like there's kind stores of, stores you walk in of. and you get ignored but mm-hmm. this the ones that pay attention even if you're not ready at that moment you know mm-hmm. like oh they are friendly i could ask a question right um we talk about sales all the time because our department goes out and works with teachers and mm-hmm. we're always wanting to come back. Mm-hmm. And so we talk about sales as be getting like booked again to come back out. Right. What does it look like when you have a student who's kind of like interested? You're like, oh, I got a bite. I got more mm-hmm. than I got yesterday. And then how does that progress? Like, do you have a, oof, we're in phase two, now I'm going to do X or? No, it's not that detailed. I mean, I haven't <laughs> written a book on it yet, so I don't don't have Would to. you? No. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't think you could write a book on that. It's really just common sense. Mm. You know, what do you do at a party when you're talking to somebody? Yeah, I'm you an know? introvert, so I'm like, I, well, I don't do Well, that's that actually that well. part of it. I've, I've definitely got some introversion in me. Yeah. And I can see that in my students and about Mm. 25%, 20-25% of my students are like painfully introverted. Wow. And I have to be careful how I approach them because they kind of see it more as an attack than (laughs) getting to know you. Yeah. But it's important for them to be, to feel like they are seen even when they don't want to be seen. Yeah. You know, as a learner in the classroom, they have to be part of the group. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are some practicalities? Because I like you talked about the individual teacher student, but then you also mentioned they have to feel a part of the group. Mm-hmm. What are some practical things there to help them feel comfortable with the people around them, not just you? Um, well, like all of us do these days, we turn and talk and pair and share and there's a lot of academic conversation between, but we also, in our morning meetings, make it into something that's not so academic. Mm-hmm. So they can, you know, share something about themselves and find other people who have shared experiences or feel the same way. Helps to make connections between the kids. I also have plastered up on my wall in big letters, we all swim together. Mm-hmm. And that common language I refer to often. Um, we also have common language that develops from the read aloud books that I read and that oh. we talk about that um, um, sometimes not always have to do with classroom life. Um, mm-hmm. Well, they have to do with life, the human experience that everybody can relate to. But I can refer back to, you know, remember when, and they're just like, oh, yeah, I got that. Yeah. You know, so we, we kind of are all the same as far as our shared experience together. That goes a long ways toward being a unified group. I like that, the common language and then the Mm -hmm. books. Tell me a book that you like because it has that, you know, themes or kind of lessons almost you could Uh, pull back in. The last two or three years I've been reading A Fish in a Tree. Okay. Um, Tell me about that. I don't know. I remember that the author, sadly, I should. It's okay. Um, it's about a child who, a sixth grader in a school who's got some life issues and some dyslexic issues, and they're not identified. And she has all mm-hmm. kinds of issues, both interpersonal and interpersonal, because of that. And she's mm-hmm. treated in a certain way. But then as the characters develop, you know, the niche is found. and. And the whole book is basically about how the people around her help her to really realize what she needs and gives it to her and mm. re- everybody grows. You know, it's yeah. a good book, a lot of yeah. character growth. But we refer back to that all year long. What do you find helpful in that? What, do you, what are the most common things you re- help people remember from that book? Mm. Well, kind of what it feels like to be the underdog. Mm-hmm. You know, remember when this happened, and we don't want to create that situation in our classroom. Yeah. 
now and everybody is really it's kind of funny it's like being on the stage all day long and you get the reaction from the audience which i just love <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can feed off the audience they feed off of me too but you know everybody in the class is like oh yeah i remember that you know it's like okay we're done we're, we're all good now <laughs> That's good. So it sounds like the literature, I mean, I'm an English teacher at the secondary mm. level. That's how I started. Yeah. The literature is powerful. Building empathy is what it reminds yeah. me of. Yeah. Like helping and them just understand. on one level, there's so much. Yeah. There's so much. Yeah. Now, would you consider that your like primary, like, are you literature? a literature lover? Because one of your, mm. the people we interviewed, there's a quote about another subject area. That's interesting. You don't have to. No, I gotta figure you out don't what have, it is. <laughs> you won't betray this person <laughs> no, no, if no. you say that's not your favorite. But No, um, English language arts is awesome and it's powerful because it's all about the human experience again. Mm. I was a psychology major, so that floats my boat. But honestly, language is what drives everything. I teach mm. language like crazy because then we can analyze what we're reading and why it has the impact on us and yeah. then emulate that sentence structure in our own writing. You know, and it, it, there's a lot of power. Use a lot of mentor sentences too. Ooh, tell me about mentor, mentor senses. Well, that mentor sentences is... Um, what did I say? Men mentornesses? Uh, mentorness. No, mentor <laughs> mentornesses. Mentor senses. Something like that. <laughs> mentor sentences. Just using a well-written sentence that's published in something mm. that the kids are reading or something I have read um, or something, you know, as a shared whatever yeah. that we kind of pick apart the language of it, how it was constructed, where the power is, how the words are being used yeah. so that they not only can understand the actual English language better, but also can emulate it. They can, they can use it as a yeah. model in their own writing. That's fabulous. Yeah, yeah it's powerful. Uh, oh, I, I'm going to go to this quote because uh, someone said that you love teaching science. I do. And uh, do you know who that is? We have quotes from uh, your principal, Neil Anderson, um, your husband, Michael, and also oh, Jamie. It could uh, be Mike. could be Jamie. Fiola. It could be Jamie. Okay, I believe it's your husband who yeah, said that. Yeah, yeah, well. Let me see. Let me verify. Um, loves teaching science. Okay, now I can't find it. It's out there. It's out there. <laughs> I have a master's degree in teaching elementary science, and I taught you the. You do. I, what? I taught the science lab at Raymond for five years. Oh, yeah. Oh, it is your husband. Yeah. Uh, you work to get your certificate in teaching science and certificate in teaching gate. True. But there's another quote that says you love teaching science, point I do. blank. Okay. It's, it's Tell me why on. you like uh, love teaching science. I don't know, probably because it's so hands on. Okay. You know, I, I see language in the kind of the same way because the words are right there. You can grab them and see what they're doing. But nothing beats seeing something in mm. action in front of you. And, you know, they're kids. They're they're closer to that. Adults get excited doing yeah. things like that. So yeah. the kids are like over the charts. Like, yeah, yeah. You know. And it's, it's fun. And I don't mind cleaning up all the mess. It's all good. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah. We have more quotes. And... Um, I think your husband got an award for writing the most <laughs> about some. Here it is. I just saw Karen loved teaching science. And that was like a bullet point all by itself. We asked him, what are, what are you? First thing he thought of. What are you passionate about? And he gave us like six bullet points. Oh, wow. Yeah. So one of the ones is um, he talked about for your previous fifth grade level, you love taking students to one of your favorite places, oh, the Getty Museum. Yeah. And watching how your students interact with the art and the museum architecture specifically yes. so yes well when you you're the wife of that? an architect that you learn about oh, those that? things and so then you <laughs> he's have... like you know what i love is that she loves architecture <laughs> yes. i it's see true. through you now michael yeah uh, no, no, so talk good. about that because he's taught me about it so i have something to to share with them yeah, yeah. So, I, I definitely point that out to them and it's kind of an aha for them because they would never have paid attention to actual building, building. They were there to see the art, not look at the building, but the building is part of the art. 
Yeah. So is the garden. It's considered to be an art piece that's owned by the Getty. Right. And well, all you have to do is mention that. And they're all like, you know, again, because they're enthusiastic and yeah. they're kids. And it's awesome. Yeah. They're like, oh, I see it. And for, yeah. I think when we were doing your, your photos right before this, you mentioned fourth grade. You like it because they bring something to the table, kind of like they have some experience. Oh, yeah. They, yes. They're, they're not little kids, they're big kids. They've, got, they've had some life experience. Uh, many of them have had a lot of life experience and they have, uh, many of them are serious readers, so they have a lot of experience vicariously and they, mm -hmm. they bring a lot into the classroom That's to great. use and to share and yeah. That's great. I uh, enjoy that. Michael also wrote that you turned down an offer of a scholarship. Do you remember that? Turned down an offer. I can of read the full sentence. Yeah, okay, let me ahead. keep going. Uh, so she turned down the offer of a scholarship to continue studying child psychology slash development. He said, you need to verify this. And, to, and stayed with teaching versus like going another academic route. Uh, I don't remember that. Okay. I'm you kids, sorry, now you have something to talk about when you go yeah. home. Well, um, like, I think he's referring to, I'm sure I have told him at this point, we've shared almost all the stories. <laughs> um, that my professors kind of questioned why I was going into teaching. Like, you're capable of doing oh. something better than that. Mm. And I rebuffed that with, there isn't anything better than that. No, I, I was always intent and focused on teaching. Yeah. But yeah, people, professors tried to skew me off into other directions. So, so tell me about that, that, might be what, that confidence that teaching is more important than maybe what they would have you look at. What? Well, you said you, you can't start teach as long as me without having a passion for it. And I see yeah. the value that it has and the relationships that I have with the kids and the families and the community and my colleagues mm. is just so rich and um, steep. It's good stuff. Yeah. And I decided at the age of eight that I was going to be a teacher. Okay. And I never wavered on that. Wow. I mean, like it was a hard and fast decision until I got to college and a professor questioned that. And I thought, oh, maybe I should think about it, you know, because I've never yeah. really wavered from that literally since I was right. eight. And I did give it some thought. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> this is for me. Wow. Do you remember about that? age of eight what yes. you were thinking or seeing in front of you what well I was you? a good student I was a good learner I I had a good relationship with my teachers and uh, it was just an all-around great experience for me and um, so you know why wouldn't I want to jump in that with both feet yeah. it, it was a good thing I was successful at it they respected me I had lots of great opportunities and new things that I hadn't done before but I also was able to recognize that other things that were important to me in my life, I was big into scouts. Um, and in the natural world with my family, uh, a lot of outdoor time, camping and hiking and stuff that I recognized that that was all learning opportunities mm. too. So that's great. As a learner. That's great. Still am. Ooh, that, haven't reached the end. That is a quote in here. Uh, hold on, please. You just, sure. uh, I think it's a, uh, Somebody used the word learner. Your husband wrote a lot, so it's a lot to it's lots <laughs> it's of hard scroll to scroll through. through it all. Yeah. Um I think No, that's not it. One moment, please. Mm -hmm. Holding, holding. Holding, holding. <laughs> um Every day, this is, I think, Neil, uh, Dr. Anderson. And so the qu question was a significant moment with Karen or a moment that shows your drive, initiative, or passion. He wrote, every day Karen works to ensure she is prepared for whatever the day may throw at her. Karen is passionate about the gate thinker and in turn the gate learner. For Karen, sometimes the answer is not the thing, mm -mm. but the process of how a student gets to the end result. Mm -hmm. Talk more about that. That's why that. bulletin boards are a challenge for me because it's never the end product. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I can't put that up. Mm, can't put that up. No, very much so the process. It's the thinking process, and it's the, it's messy sometimes. 
Yeah. You know? um, I work very hard to apply the gate pedagogy so that the thinking is the end game. The product is there to show the thinking. Mm. It's not the facts. It's not the, the basics of, right. say, you know, explorers or you know, whatever the topic is, yeah. but the deeper understanding of the connections between them and, you know, using the gate icons to, to think through it in a different way yeah. and make connections and triads and, you know, there, there's a lot there. What, when you think about that, a product that best shows the process of learning, is there one that you feel more like more comfortable with or more strongly mm. about? Um, Cause I reflecting on it, I think that's true. A lot of it, it's like, here's the end product, like writing, here's the final draft. And then yeah. you don't see all the things right. that came before. Right. And the things like writing that are more complex take a lot of messiness to get to that yeah. final product. Do you have a product that's messy that sh- kind of shows uh, that? Not any one. There's so many possibilities, you know, and yeah. that's my biggest problem is I've got too many tabs open on different possibilities of things all the time. It's trying <laughs> to pick them. I don't really have a go-to that we do all the time. We do a lot of different things. Yeah. If you were talking to a, uh, a teacher who is not quite clear on that concept, what would you encourage them to look for in a product? You know, they're designing some sort of learning. What would you say they should keep their mind open for? The, and the look product for? would need to show the application of the learning, really. Say more or, about that. Or the higher level thinking that went into to show their understanding of the, the many different pieces that it took to get there. So, you know, it's not as simple as writing a statement. Mm-hmm. And writing a paragraph with explanation and evidence is better. Uh, writing more than that is even better. Being able to um, uh, break it out with arts and show the emotion of something mm-hmm. that goes along with it and label it in a specific way that shows the learning mm-hmm. behind it. You know, there's a lot. There's yeah. a lot of possibilities. That's the, the fun, creative part about teaching. Yeah. I I right away thought about art as like another kind of dimension of showing learning. Yeah. But then you said, and then label it, which shows even like, yeah, kind of like an exploded view of here's the thing, but Mm -hmm. here's like labeling the parts of the the thing. Is you can show a lot with art that you can't show with words, but sometimes the words are necessary to really show that you get it. You know, yeah. it's not just about emotion and color. Yeah. It's also some factual information in there. Yeah. Or not just even writing the factual statement, but kind of an explanation of what that art represents to them and how it shows it. Right. Like yeah. a reflective piece. Mm-hmm. And they're very good at that. You know, they've been at an arts integration school for their whole life. They're not afraid to pick up something and express it in art. Yeah. Just, just yeah. amazing. Talk a little bit about the arts integration uh, because Golden Hill's going through it. They're doing a new logo. They're kind of at this like... We've done the new logo. Yes, we yes. got a new name and yes. everything. Yeah. So t- tell tell me about mm-hmm. that. Like what would a student get at an arts integration school that's different? It's like another dimension mm-hmm. on with the learning. It's not something added on top of it. It's kind of integrated into it. It's, well, it's kind of an overused word, but... Um, it's another way of being to think mm. like an artist. It's also another way of learning through the process. It's also another way of showing the learning mm. that uh, you know one in particular kid couldn't do so well in writing, that they can do it well in another way. And you know, art is multi-dimensional. Mm. You can get a lot from it. You can give a lot to it. You can take a lot from it. You can use it for a lot. Let's put a pin in that facet of art that it's multidimensional. I'm going to mm-hmm. read you a quote. This is from Jamie Fiola. Uh, and the question was, when is a moment where Karen is being truly Karen? She said, oh, no. Karen, <laughs> Karen is funny and laughter is part of our daily meetings and interactions. Sure. 
We can laugh until we cry during our PLCs. <laughs> True. And our laughter is good for the soul is good for the soul kind of laughter, not negative or aimed at anyone. Oh no, no, it comes deep from within. So tell tell <laughs> me more about laughter and humor and how that is kind of like art, like it unlocks this other dimension or It does. Yeah. It does. It's like a way of of speaking that you can't get away with in other, in other ways. I, I, I push the envelope with my, okay. with my humor sometimes. <laughs> Jamie would know. You can ask her later. You, you have me wanting uh, to visit a PLC now. <laughs> well, it's not just a PLC. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, first thing in the morning, last thing in the night. That's no, great. it's it's another way of expressing that you, you know, you wouldn't write an essay on something that you were feeling that you would just come out in humor and it's done. Mm. It's cathartic. Mm -hmm. It's uh, again not to be redundant. It's like a relationship thing. If if I say something that's got a side of humor or sarcasm or you know, whatever, <laughs> and it's caught by the person that I'm throwing it to there's that connection there it's like that human experience thing you know yeah. i'm not well just like you and i did yeah when i first got here yeah you know yeah yeah i had a difficult day how about you <laughs> you know yeah yeah, yeah. No, life is not perfect life is a struggle being a teacher is so multi-dimensional and multi-faceted with so many stakeholders and so many tasks and so yeah. many big ideas so many small things to take care of that you can't possibly juggle all of that at the same time no so you, you, you got to have empathy you got to have a release with humor yeah you've got to have a release for the, the frustration you, you know yeah it's all good yeah humor is very helpful there was something you said about humor um, you said catch uh, and th mm -hmm. like somebody throws some yeah. catches something you throw mm -hmm. which struck me at first like a sport like a playful banter but then I was like also struck by the fact that it's that one moment it is sometimes it's brief sometimes it's bigger sometimes it's very profound sometimes it's ridiculous <laughs> but <laughs> it all kind of serves a purpose yeah for me it does I think I, I adopted the motto laugh or cry a long time ago, and I don't want to cry. Right. So I laugh a lot. <laughs> yeah. I th yeah. It's That's helpful. A funny one. It's helpful. Yeah. That is a good mantra. Mm -hmm. I probably need to adopt that. It helps you kind of <laughs> yeah, crying's pick up no on fun. the... No. <laughs> Leaves your eyes all red and yeah. puffy. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, yeah. Uh, yeah, it helps you pick up on the lighter side, yes. which is always available. A quote from Jamie, uh, she says, you're a joy to work with, which I get because of the humor we were just talking about. She says you're someone that she respects deeply. What do you think of when you hear somebody respects you deeply, what quality about yourself surfaces to your mind? Um, I philosophize easily. Okay. <laughs> I start profounding on the, the things in the, the fount of knowledge that I have from all these decades of teaching. Yeah. And she's she's very good to to listen to that. And you know, we have a lot of problems to solve. Yeah. I have a lot of opinions. That's yeah. what. <laughs> I like that uh, profounding. Yeah. I'm profounding right now. Yeah. That's good. That's good. It sounds like there's a kind of like mindedness. And an openness and a spirit to like we're on this journey together. For sure. Yeah. With all my colleagues. We are. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. great. Um, we have uh, your your husband, again, a quote from, from Michael. And I want to tie this into, we've talked about art, but mm -hmm. this is sort of a different moment. Mm -hmm. um, he said a, this was under the question, a significant moment that shows a, a drive or initiative that comes kind of innately from you. He wrote, Karen loves art. We went to Florence, Italy several years mm -hmm. ago. Do you remember this? I remember Florence. That gets me right there. Tell me a little bit about Florence before I read the rest of the quote. What do you oh, remember? Oh, it's just, that was the first time. No, it wasn't the first time I'd been in Europe, actually. It's the second. It's just, there's so much. I was so taken by what was just almost commonplace there. You know, there's a lot of people that are there to all see it. So you know that that's 
end goal is to get your eyes on this amazing thing, but it's everywhere and the time frame of it is significant and the history of it is significant. It's just cool to be in the middle of all that, besides the beauty of the art and the amazingness of how that could have been completed especially in that time frame right. and that it still exists and you know, yeah just a lot of wonder yeah and, yeah wonder mm -hmm. and with the tools yeah yeah all of it yeah i went to florence last summer it was my mm -hmm. first cool. time to italy and like the uh, michelangelo's david yeah just we had a tour that the information of how that was created completely mind-boggling and even if you missed it we didn't do tours I read a lot but yeah. I didn't really have all that information it's just I you know had to just enjoy it because yeah. there's yeah. so much to ponder like, yeah you know, how why what <laughs> oh, yeah yeah it's a lot so here's a little bit more about uh, we went to Florence uh, Italy several years ago mm -hmm. where uh, Michael said he had already been several times. Yes. After dark I said we should walk to the Duomo oh, so that yeah. you can see it. <laughs> right there right, right now. Right there the Duomo. Right there right now. Uh, for the first time knowing how spectacular it looks at night. Upon seeing the Duomo, the baptistry, the campanile yeah. know, illuminated mm -hmm. at night. He said that you, do you remember what happened? I was <laughs> literally speechless. Yeah he said you cried over the beauty I, of it. It, it, yeah, I Which, can still feel that right now. Right, and that in itself is an impressive like connection to that moment. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it, I, yeah. How do you think that almost tenderness, you know, like being that open to emotion yeah. from art, yeah, comes to play with teaching? Can you make a connection there? Mm. I don't know, maybe the poignancy of life. See, there, go philosophically. Again. Say more about that. I, I, you know, these kids are amazing people in their own right, and they are so hungry to know and learn and grow more, and I get to be the one that does that with them for a while. There's a lot of wonder in that. It's amazing that they're open in that way. It's amazing that I can get a concept across so they can understand it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing that they, I, I have, in, in my classroom with my students, I expect a lot of them. The, the bar is pretty high, mm -hmm. and they're always reaching for it. And they, they do and understand and produce amazing things for 9 and 10 years old. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I believe in them. Yeah. They're, they're neat people. And that's cool, the attitude you have of genuine respect. Yeah, yes, it truly is genuine yeah. respect. And just being it kind is. of fascinated by what it they is. can do. They're not just the kids who happen to be in my room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting very, very close. Actually, we're over time, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to look for a quote that would help us land this interview here hmm. interesting this is a, a bonus from dr anderson mm -hmm. uh anything else you'd like to share just beyond you know a significant moment or what you're mm -hmm. passionate about um and he has this uh this sentence she works to build not just academic ability but in each of them um kind of this understanding that there are people who can contribute to producing a better society Sounds very yeah, I have a real focus as we all do these days because it's so needed. But um, I really take to heart the social emotional learning mm -hmm. because I see the hurt and the angst and the the confusion in my students when I um, pull the cover off the white elephant in the room, so to speak and label it as perfectionism. I get the Twitters around the room and the shy look sounds like bingo. You know, got that when we can talk about it and we can make it, um, we can normalize it. Mm. There's a lot of things that these young people are harboring in their hearts and their minds and their souls, their bodies that they don't know what to do with. They don't know how to 
name it. They don't know that it's normal. They don't know that other people have the same problem. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of work with that in our in almost daily social emotional learning and with a variety of resources um, that I have found to be really helpful to them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. And it's another way that we all swim together. Yeah. It's another shared, you know, we yeah. all know that we're not, uh, not only are we imperfect in what we're doing, um, we are not having to hide it from each other Yeah. because we all have the same problems. Yeah. How, I love that. And just realized the whole, uh, I keep asking, like, what's a practical way? Or I started out doing that, and you, you tend to get to Go these big. Yeah, I know. <laughs> these big. I'm a big picture thinker. Yeah, and that's really, really Which is great. also why bulletin boards are not my first <laughs> <laughs> uh, But if I can ask, yeah. when you're in that moment, the students you're talking about maybe, or you're thinking about perfectionism and how they have assumptions, yeah. they obviously assume you're the smartest person in the room or most of them would assume like she's perfect they respect me for sure what what do you do to oh i share a lot of stories <laughs> share a lot of stories do you want to share one? Oh goodness on what in particular let's see i shared a story how, with them today. how you humanize yourself uh for your students well i humanize myself every day with the mistakes that i make in front of them i don't try to be perfect and i allow them to offer correction Mm. You know, we, we're all in it together. I, I bet you they love that. Oh, they it's love so it too much. <laughs> give and take. You know, yeah. they get to be a part of the process. Yeah. Right. And they learn how to do it politely and with care and concern and, you know, not throw me under the bus. Yeah. Um, but uh, pretty much everything that they're dealing with, every topic that we have in a more formal way worked through and also more organically because it comes up in the moment. Mm. Um, I have something to say about that from when I was a child, from yesterday, from this morning, yeah. that I um, share with them very easily. I, I don't really have a problem being appropriate or, you know, putting the margins where they right. belong. That's pretty easy for me to do, but it definitely humanizes me. Yeah. And so are you kind of just putting the brakes on the, like, oh, I have a story that relates to what's happening. Let me tell you about a time. Let's say they're teasing somebody for something, and then you mm -hmm. have a story where you're like. Sometimes, yeah. yeah sometimes it works that way. And do you point sometimes it out? Sometimes we're all sharing, and i like, oh, I've got one. And mm -hmm. sometimes I ask them, is it okay if I tell you? You know, can I, can I tell a story for a minute? And then they're all leaning in. Yeah, of course. You know, that's, that's the thing about SEL that just really was unbelievable to me. When we first started formally teaching social and emotional learning, when I would broach the topic, the, the kids literally all leaned in toward me wow. to listen. Yeah. yeah, I don't get that with, you know, math, <laughs> language. <laughs> but SEL is relevant is to them. It's relevant to every single one of them. Yeah. And it's like I got their attention immediately because you're gonna talk about that, you know, yeah. because they need to know about that. Yeah, and they're curious yeah. and they've, well, they're curious because they have a need. Yeah. They need help yeah. with it. Yeah. And then we offer some real, through really good curriculum in a variety of places and ways, there are some real practical things to help kids with. That. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I wish that had always been around. Yeah, yeah. And we probably have been, you know, doing things uh, off the cuff to kind of help, but mm -hmm. then to have a concerted effort and curriculum to help uh, well, for sure. comprehensively I've address learned it. from it. You oh, know, okay. there, there's yeah. some good stuff out there. Yeah. It also very much appeals to me as a psychology major. Yeah, <laughs> it's, right. It's all in that row. Yeah. You know, it's practical help for real issue. Yeah. It fixes things. My wife they had a, a little grant at a school she was at like a couple years ago and they did like a spa day for teachers. Aww. And it was so amazing to hear how you know, and it was just like, we're going to turn off lights in this room and there's going to be a little bit of like essential oils and mm -hmm. I, I don't know what right, all went right. into it, but just the need to feel like somebody's paying attention to you and cares about you. Or you have permission to just stop and be a human. 
Yeah. Stop being a doer and yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, we need that. We do. Um, in the sake of, for the sake of wrapping this up, I do have a question that I've been using at the end of the last few interviews, and it's uh, let's say I was able to give you your own billboard and it was on the side of the freeway where a lot of people would pass. What is the phrase or the words you would assemble to put on that billboard as a message to the, the people? I don't really use this all the time, but the first thing that comes to mind is you can do it. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I love it. Well, no, for the kind of the idea that people should believe in themselves and that growth yeah. is possible and change is inevitable and it can be good. That's great. Yeah. I love it. Change is good. How about that? Yeah. There's another good one. Yeah. That one hurts. That was a little tougher to swallow than you can do it. <laughs> change is good. Like, is it? And it I have is. a person who likes change. <laughs> Almost always change is good. Yeah. Even the... Okay, I won't go too deep with this, but <laughs> the the biggest changes in my life that were seemingly very negative have all brought good to my life mm -hmm. and redeemed. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. and it is. And that's a powerful position to share with other people. Yeah. You know, supportive, mm -hmm. encouraging. Yeah. Not I think I empathize with my students a lot. Yeah. You know, I'm not yeah. too far away from... <laughs> and that's great if you can retain that um, yeah. openness. I yeah. I forget what it's kind of like beginner's mind is like oh. just that open wonder. Yeah, don't forget what it was like yeah. before you became the expert yeah. or the whatever. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because yeah, you don't start out that way. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. That's great. Well, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Mm.